Now, this right here was the first jet airliner ever built, and let me tell you, there's lots of reasons why you wouldn't want to have flown it. Yes, the de Havilland Comet airplane, which had its first flight in 1949. But three of these airplanes crashed just over the span of 12 months. Did you know the Comet really did change aviation? And I would call it sort of a beta tester for jet airliners because lots of lessons were learned from the accidents that did happen. Yes, and we can finally fly the de Havilland Comet. There is an FS export add-on for the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. And let me tell you, it's not necessarily uh good, but that won't stop us from having fun. That says, uh, take a look at this modeling. Obviously, we can see this unique shape of the engines being incorporated directly into the wings themselves. A design that we never saw again on any jet airliner. You may ask, well, why don't we do that anymore? It's practically because engines have gotten so big nowadays, which makes sense. You know, the bigger the jet engine, the more efficient it becomes. And it would be pretty hard to put a GE90 engine into the 777 wing. You wouldn't be able to do it also structurally but this airplane had it. Now, let's take a look into the cockpit, which is very 1940s indeed, um, and um, especially, it's not necessarily good. I mean, it's 3D, but it doesn't work. None, none of the gauges work. In fact, none of the buttons work. We have very red leather seats here for the pilot, as well as for the flight engineer. Look at this. Doesn't even look that complicated of a cockpit here. Now, luckily, this year, I think we're gonna see a bit of a better add-on for the Microsoft Flight Sim for the Comet, but uh, this is what what we have to work with for now. Unfortunately, there's not even a cabin, uh, you know, simulated or anything. It would be interesting to take a look into it, although it not necessarily was a nice place to be. It was relatively cramped. This plane didn't have window shades like it has today. Yes, we have those goofy ass curtains, but something Akumit was very much known for was for having square windows, at least in the first series of this airplane. You know, in fact, there were actually four Comet airplanes, all of which were designed improvements, of course, making the airplane fly safer. This, for example, is the third variant of the Comet airplane, and as you can see, it had circular windows. Why? In the first generation Comet, it very quickly turned out that square windows weren't a good idea at all, because the plane flew at high altitude, up to 40,000 feet with lots of pressure, you know, from the pressurized cabin, which is why the crash of BOAC Flight 783 happened. The fuselage of the airplane just wasn't strong enough because of the square windows so the airplane would fall apart in midair. Not only once in 1953, but for a second time in 1954 on Flight 781, where the forward aerial window made the airplane overstretch. And the same year, the same thing happened again on South African Airways Flight 201, in-flight metal fatigue failure leading to explosive decompression in mid-flight breakup. Now for this reason, once again, this is why we now have square windows on aerial airplanes. And for this very reason, we nowadays have circular windows on modern airplane. Circular shapes just can take more pressure. That's the fact. Yes, over the years, nearly a quarter of all these Comet airplanes were involved in a full whole loss accident. Why? Because lots of pilot errors. This is always a problem when you have a brand new airplane type, a jet. Back in the days, they hadn't quite figured out yet how to train pilots properly, how to do procedures properly. Yes, over the years, lots of things changed. Yes, nine Comet airplanes were involved in crashes during takeoff or landing, which weren't fatal, but caused the airplanes to be damaged beyond repair, also attributed to mostly powered error. Now, four fatal crashes of the Comet were also due to instrument failure which is a crazy rate, which definitely is not comparable to today. Talking about instrument failure, we kind of have that going on here. This is not a very functional airplane and it's kind of broken. Either way, let's maybe try to fly this beast. Come on, full power? Yes, look at that throttle animation working. Let's see how fast this airplane was. Now, um, I have high reason to doubt the realism here of this flight model, but look at this weirdly unswept horizontal stabilizer. Nowadays, they're more swept, right? In general, we've come quite far in wing development. And we have an F-8, we just crashed into an F-18, and for some reason this airplane is acting up a little bit. Let's go ahead and now take off. Yes, I mean, for the days, this was such a fast airplane, of course. Let's put the landing gear up. Let's do that. 
Come on, that works nicely. Our plane landing gear just folds nicely into the wing. Not that hard. And now we can fly all the way to 40,000 feet for the first time as a passenger airliner. Now the airplane used the Rolls-Royce Avon jet engine, the same engine that the Caravels also use. Very popular engine and quite reliable, actually. And look at this immense climb rate of the sir. This is maybe a little bit too overpowered now. Now the Comet 3 that we're flying was never really introduced in passenger service. Why? Because even though it finally had those circular windows, it didn't have all the necessary improvement to make this fuselage properly strong. And so they just skipped a number and all moved all the way to the Comet 4, which was finally a safe airplane. This airplane carried a lot more passengers and it was a lot bigger, but especially had bigger engines, delivering twice the power of the original Comet. Which is why the Comet 4 could actually fly transatlantic routes for the first time. Very, very significant change and breakthrough. And by 1989, the last Comet retired from passenger service with Dan Air. But all right, this plane is flying so nicely now. Let's go ahead and do some testing with it. See if it lands nicely as well. See, something else quite a breakthrough of the Comet airliner was, of course, also the thrust reversers. Um, no, why is this airplane completely quiet now? This airplane is a bit confusing. Let's put the flaps down now. And as you can see, they come out quite nicely. We have quite a lot of flap surface. We have the spoilers here. Look at that. That is like 50 degrees degrees of flaps at least holy moly oh no now we've overdone it problem is like in the cockpit we have no instruments uh yes everybody what the world needs now is a proper comet add-on let's we are dying in fact the engines are turned off look ah now they run this is okay no nothing to worry about landing gear down please yes let's go ahead and try to land this airplane now we will probably need we will probably need to use outside view really because Otherwise, I can't really see. But look, this airplane, because of the thick wing it does have, flies at quite a low speed here, too. But doesn't this tail look funky? Doesn't really look like a jet airliner tail, does it? All right, come on. Safest Comet Airlines flight. This is totally fine. Now, thrust reversers don't really work here, it seems. I'm putting them out, but it doesn't really work. But there we go. We have, we have done it. Jesus Christ, that was quite a hard landing. Um, yeah, thrust reversers are absolutely broken. Makes no difference. And what the hell is even going on? I will not even comment on that. And for some reason, the engine has completely... This is confusing. Can this thing take off again here? By the way, this is 60 degrees of flap. You know, it's interesting. The Comet is nowadays regarded as, you know, such an adventurous marble of aviation, despite half a thousand people losing their lives on it. And I think it's just a great example of how in order for things to improve and to be safe, people have to die. It's like in medicine or in cars. In a weird way, those victims of any of those crashes sacrifice their lives to make ours safer. Isn't that a weird thought? Let's go ahead and take off and do this full power. Yes, you can do it. Yeah, look at this. Perfect. All right, look at this, 100 knots, Comet is doing okay, flaps fully down, and take off, yes! I mean, okay, back in the day, runways were a bit shorter, not as short as this, but this is absolutely fine. I'm very amazed by the performance of the de Havilland Comet. I really cannot wait for this airplane to come out properly in the flight simulator, we have now turned this into a submarine, Looks quite realistic. My only wish list for this upcoming add-on is sort of like a failure system where you can make the airplane fall apart mid-air and you die. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, Guns Killer, R27, James Deram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.